So this week, Sony released the ZV-1 or ZV-1. The camera is based upon the RX100 Mark V. This is the RX100 Mark III, but it looks identical to that, apart from the internals, etc. So what I'd like to do in this video is show you the ZV-1, show you what the camera is all about, give you my thoughts on it, and then explain why I've decided not to buy this camera. So if I jump over to the website, you can see the camera here, the vlog camera ZV-1 as they're calling it. And this is the camera here. And if you're familiar with the RX100 series, you'll notice a lot of differences right away. One is, which you can maybe not see from this camera, is it's, it's a little bit thicker than a regular RX100. Not too thick though, it's still a very portable camera. The other thing is the build quality. They've kind of went moved away from the textured you know, plastic they used before. It does look a little bit cheaper. I think that's something which I can live with. You know, if they're, you know, they've improved other things, they've went for a cheaper plastic, that's okay. They've also added a grip, which is something which I've got on my RX100 Mark III. It was an accessory which I glued on. And let's state the obvious, they do not have a flip screen. The RX100 series has always had a flip screen. And I've always liked that, if I'm honest. I've always liked the flip screen. But, you know, this is great for just flipping up and recording a clip. And you do sometimes, you know, your eyes kind of gravitate towards the screen instead of the lens. But... Obviously, if you put a, a cold tube mount there, that does not work. That does not work. You can't see what you're doing. There's actually a lot of cameras out there that have got that. They've got the flip screen and then they've got the cold tube there. What they've done instead is move to an articulating LCD screen, kind of like Canon and Panasonic, etc. And that works. This is a Canon M50, which a couple of years ago, two years ago or so, it was you know kind of credited as credited as being one of the best vlogging cameras in the market. And this one, you put the camera at the side and you put the, the microphone on top like that. And it works. It's practical. It really is practical. And I do prefer the flip screen, if I'm honest, as far as just quickly flipping a screen up. But it makes sense to put the screen at the side so that you can mount the microphone at the top of the camera. So that's good. Now, what they've also done is added a really good internal microphone at the top of the camera. So they've got a cold shoe mount for an external microphone. They've got really good internal mics, uh, an internal mic there as well. They've got an, ex an external microphone port as well. There is no uh, monitoring headphone jack, so you can't like listen to your audio when you're recording, but there's a lot of cameras, portable cameras that don't have that, so that's acceptable. Essentially what they've done here, if you look at it, is they've changed the RX100 series and made it into a video camera first rather than a photo camera. So if I jump back to my overhead camera, you'll see what I mean. The RX100 series was always a fantastic photography device, photography camera that had really good video, but it was prim primarily still for photographs. And what they've done is changed it and they've made it a video camera first and photo second. So instead of the flash, you've got this really good internal microphone that picks up audio at the front and back really well. Previously, when I turned the camera around, the sound was kind of muffled at the back. They've also put in a cold shoe mount instead of the viewfinder. So if you're looking to take a lot of photos, that's not good. But if you're looking to take videos, that's great because you don't really use that anyway. So they've sacrificed a lot of things, changed things to make it more like a video camera. And there's a lot of little subtle things there as well. You know, previously I had to click there to record and now they've got a big red record button at the, at the top. And you can see from the picture there as well, they've got that red LED button at the front to show you that, re that you're recording. All of this is good. I think they've done a really good job here. Now, this retails at £700. Now, interestingly, that's the same price as the RX100 Mark V that it's based upon. Now, here's the thing. If you're kind of swaying between both of them, go for the RX100 Mark V and buy used. In the UK, at least, instead of paying £700 new, you can pick up second hand, second hand for like 350 because it's been out for five years. But if you're buying new, there is a good argument, certainly if you're making videos, to go for this instead. In fact, there's a lot of arguments to go for this instead. It, it is a much better video device. £700 is still a lot of money, though. You know, Whenever you're spending money, do your research. Um, it's saying it's not out here. And Amazon, I don't know why they got it a week later than everyone else, but 700 pounds, it's about 770, 780 here in the UK if you wanted to get it with the grip. In the USA, same story, 750 dollars, 850 if you want, you know, you want it with the vlog grip. And they're really pushing this vlog grip. This grip helps you record, you know, you can walk around with it. 
and it's got like a little tripod stand. If you don't buy it in that deal and get it for like £70, $100, it's like £170 for this in the UK, $200 or something. It's ridiculously expensive. It's totally overpriced for what it is. But Sony are really pushing this with this camera. You know, they're really pushing it as a combo deal. And they're really pushing this as a vlogging device. Now, is this a vlogging device? Well, I don't think so. And this is really my sticking point with this camera. There is a lot to love about this camera. The internal microphones are great. The video quality is excellent. David Harry published a video today where he's walking around in the park. And you can see just how good the video quality is. And he really highlights how good the microphone quality is as well. And Sony's pushing this, they're pushing this as a video camera and they're pushing it as a vlogging camera. And a lot of YouTubers have just jumped on that bandwagon. If you see this camera, everyone's saying the ultimate vlogging camera. And you can see here, I, Justine, for example, she does a lot of good videos online. The perfect vlogging camera is finally here. I've got to disagree with her here. This is not the perfect vlogging camera. And David actually, he did a, a, an unboxing yesterday. And interestingly, the box, you know, the Sony box just says ZV-1, but there's like a, a cardboard sleeve above it that says vlogging, content creation, etc. That suggests that this camera has been completed, kicked to the Sony marketing department, and then they've thought, right, how can we sell this? And thought, right, let's call it, a, instead of just calling it a video camera, let's call it a vlogging camera. And this is my kind of sticking point with this. This is not a perfect, this is not the perfect vlogging camera. There's one big issue with this and it's the focal range. This has got a 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent, which is identical to what I've got in my RX100. And it's not good for vlogging. It really isn't. If I'm out vlogging with this, I need to hold it like that. If I don't and I just hold it normally, I am like 80% of the shot and you really can't see what's going on in the background. It's just too zoomed in. Even here, if I had to set this where my Sony uh, A6500 is, this would all be kind of squeezed in and my face would be dominating the clip. And you don't want that, guys. I'm 40 years old. I've got a lot of wrinkles and blemishes. Now, I realize that this will be, you know, this is obviously, well, this isn't the ZV-1, but the ZV-1 is appealing to the whole Instagram crew, the whole vlogging crew on YouTube. And a lot of these people do love themselves. But even those people don't want their face to be like 90% of the shot, you know, 80, 90% of the shot. And that's the thing, that's my biggest sticking point with it because if you're out vlogging, you kind of want a wide angle, something that you get with an action camera and you want to see yourself in the center of the clip and then everything else around you. That's really what you want for some sort of vlogging solution. And I get that with my smartphone. I get it with an action camera. And I also get it with my Canon M50 because I've got an 11 to 22 millimeter lens. This is the perfect lens, I would say, because this captures the perfect size. It shows you everything that's happening. It shows you me. It shows you everything else that's happening. But that's not what they've done. That's not what they've done. They've stayed with that 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent. And that's the problem that I've got with the camera. It is a great video device. There's no denying that the footage is excellent, the internal microphones are excellent, and even if you don't like the internal microphones, you've got that external mic port and the cold shoe port that you can put on your own external microphone and you can improve the quality. That is powerful. And if you're looking for a good camera for yourself, for YouTube, etc., this can do you know most of what all my other cameras can do. But you are fixed with that 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent range. And there's not much else you can do with that. Now, what that means is if you're happy to walk around with a selfie stick and get it at that kind of distance, you'll be 100% happy with this camera. If you're happy positioning it on a tripod or something at home and you're sitting away like I am just now on a desk and you've got it at the right range, like for me, that would probably be a way back here, then you will like this camera. But you've got to realize that while Sony is marketing this as a vlogging camera, in a lot of situations, it's not going to act as a vlogging camera because if you hold it like you would a normal camera, a normal vlogging camera, you're going to be too zoomed in. So bear that in mind. So yes, that's really my thoughts on it. It's kind of a missed opportunity from Sony. They've, they've did a lot of things right here with the internal microphone and the external mic port and the video quality. And they've got a lot of these kind of one-click automatic features for autofocus and different things. Some things they haven't got right though, you know, they've not got weather sealing. Okay, I can live with that. They've got a micro B charging port instead of type C. Okay, I can live with that. It's kind of strange in 2020. 
They've got 4K, but 4K lasts five minutes and it crops it in to even closer, so it's unusable. Again, bizarre, but if you're recording at 1080p, I guess that's a known issue. It's, it just seems like a missed opportunity for them to, you know, if they change the focal length and, and fix the crop better, this could have been the ulti ultimate device for so many different situations. But for me, I've decided not to buy it. This was on my Amazon wish list for a week or two, and I was very close to buying it. But after looking at reviews and looking at footage from a lot of different uh, YouTubers, it, it just isn't a camera for me. So I will be looking for another camera. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So please do check out the official website and look at some footage online. I'll leave a link to David's videos about it. He's doing a lot of tests with it and his footage today was really good in particular. So check those out. Have a look at it. Let me know what you think. And I'll speak to you all in the next one. Take care.